that uh, uh, basically I would like to welcome you to this session on comprehensive evaluations of international institutions. My name is Rob Vandenberg, I'm the Director of Evaluation of the Global Environment Facility and we're actually a fund that has a tradition of doing these evaluations. So let me go into what these evaluations are and let me present to you what we found so far when looking at these evaluations. What do we mean by comprehensive evaluations? They are an attempt to provide an overview of the achievements and performance of an institution, an organization, a fund or a program in international cooperation and in international development. So we're talking here about the, indeed the Global Environment Facility, but also organizations like FAO, IFAD, uh, and uh, UNESCO, many others. Some of them UN organizations, but also the Global Funds to, uh, on uh, AIDS, uh, tuberculosis, and malaria. So indeed, the IFAD evaluation, uh, which took place in 2005, was such a comprehensive evaluation. The FAO one, was done in 2007, UNESCO 2011. Uh, and um, these are big evaluations. The average uh, budget of an evaluation like this is between one and two million. So we're not talking about small exercises. They can't be small because they try to go through performance issues up to results and achievements, up to organizational effectiveness issues of budget, etc, etc. So they try to tackle everything and they can't because they tend to be focused often on reform processes that are taking place in these agencies or they tend to be focused on replenishments that need to, uh, to take place. Uh, uh, welcome Elliot, uh, please join us uh, in the panel. Um, they tend to be expensive, as I said, take longer, be more complicated than regular thematic or portfolio evaluations. Now, there is this comprehensive evaluation initiative, and this started off as an initiative of practitioners who were actually involved in these evaluations. And the exchanges that we had in that group led to a first identification of the issues and an overview study to explore these. And this overview study found that uh, there were some problematic, consistent weaknesses and most importantly, a lack of compatibility of these evaluations. So it seems a kind of a loss of an opportunity. If you have these big evaluations, you spend a lot of money, but it's really focused on this one organization only. And you cannot uh, draw any conclusions that go beyond the organization. So, the initiative group felt that the way forward would be that there would be case studies that could deepen the understanding of these specific comprehensive evaluations. And these case studies were discussed in Paris in June um, at UNESCO. And we discussed their case studies of FAO, IFAD, GF, UNESCO and the Global Fund, as well as a bilateral study commissioned by SADEF, the Swedish evaluation organization on bilateral assessments of multilateral organizations. And we had the involvement of members of the DAC evaluation network of the UN evaluation group and the evaluation cooperation group of the banks, as well as evaluation officers involved in these comprehensive evaluations, so from the organizations themselves. And uh, we had some interested people in OECD, DAC, who are involved in these assessments of multilateral effectiveness that the community as a whole is undertaking. Now, we also have a website that will support this, uh, this uh, community of practice that will uh, come online in the near future presenting the workshop documents. So take a note of this website if you're interested in this initiative and uh, although it's not completely uh, up and running yet, it will be there in the very near future and you could uh, uh, access uh, the documents that we have prepared from that uh, website. Now, so what did we conclude in Paris? But beyond this organization, the usefulness was problematic as they were insufficiently incorporating international harmonization and architecture questions 
So the discussions that were held in Busan, in Accra, in Paris, uh, could have led to some indicators on whether these organizations were aligning themselves with the Paris Declaration, for example, or were uh, aligning themselves to country priorities. And uh, there were efforts in these evaluations to look at these, but not systematic and not in the same way. There was little effort at benchmarking. And they continue to be looked at as ad hoc and unique, and thus have a tendency to reinvent the wheel. When an organization decides to have one of these, they basically say, this is unique, nobody's ever done this before, and we uh, will think through how we can do this, and thus they create some of the same problems that have occurred earlier. So, is there really an ad hoc nature to these? And should we say, okay, we should not devote too much time and attention to this because basically there, are no, uh, there is no system to this. Well, we identified three distinct causes for comprehensive evaluations in, in, in Paris. First of all, if there is a crisis or a reform process that requires an overall assessment of the organization, these tend to be ad hoc. Basically, an organization will say, we're now in a crisis and definitely we hope in five years time to not be in a crisis anymore. So let's, this is just a one-off. But replenishments that need to be informed on achievements of the organization <coughs> tend to be regular occurring events. And the GF is an example of this. We've had these overall performance studies of the GF every four years. And we're now on the fifth. So we're starting up the fifth overall performance study of the GF. A uh, need for evaluative information at the organizational level, we identify this as, as, as also a cause for these evaluations, especially in global partnership programs and funds. And there are a rapidly growing number of them. They were also termed the vertical funds. You may have heard of, of, of them. You know all of these new funds, that, new initiatives that are focused on sometimes narrow perspectives of we can uh, change something in the world on one specific issue. And these funds tend to have uh, an evaluation function that is focused on the project level, on the intervention level. And they don't have that much of an evaluative insight on what's happening at the organizational level, whether the organization as a whole is, uh, uh, is uh, functioning uh, well. So, they tend to commission, now this is a growth market, so to say, they tend to commission these comprehensive evaluations and spend a lot of money on them. So, we feel uh, there uh, uh, is something that, I mean, there is a, a continuing demand for these evaluations and uh, there is thus a reason to continue to learn from the past. Now, these comprehensive evaluations should indeed also be seen in the perspective of uh, comparative assessment initiatives, especially in the bilateral domain, uh, to assess effectiveness of multilateral organizations. We, we, we know about MOPAN, which is a kind of a, uh, I, I don't even know what the acronym stands for, some, some of the panel members may do, but uh, the, uh, it, it's looking at perceptions of how well a multilateral organization is serving uh, the needs of a country. Uh, there are other assessments that are taking place, peer reviews taking place, comparative assessments, and these initiatives, we've looked at them, we've, they are also not very consistent. And they do not cover institutional achievements and performance, and often don't go into depth. So a comparative assessment would be aided both by a well-established independent evaluation function beyond the project level, or if this is not taking place or is it, it's not there, then a comprehensive evaluation could provide this uh, assessment. And it could provide a kind of a, an, an additional element to the uh, many instruments that are currently there that would help uh, in... Uh, and if we look at the, the growth markets of the global funds and programs, of the more than 40 global funds and programs that we see in the world, which draw a lot of money from especially bilateral donors, but also from the Gates Foundation, for example, 
we see that uh, only two of these have an independent evaluation function and only one of these evaluation functions is well established. The other one actually still um, is in the startup phase. So what can we do actually to increase the value for money of these comprehensive evaluations? Uh, we can identify the weaknesses better and thus be able to tackle them. We identified that independence is critical. It was often okay, but could be further strengthened. There are uh, lessons that we can draw from what happened. The overall quality of these comprehensive evaluations varies and could be improved. Transparency communication could contribute to credibility. And uh, periodic comprehensive evaluation, which may be an instrument for these global funds and programs, uh, can add value over time. They can actually become cheaper. And we have a, 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 I can give you an example from the GEF. Uh, our fourth overall performance study cost uh, two million dollars, and our fifth overall performance study one million dollars. And it's possible to basically lower the amount of money, lower the budget, because we integrated many of the aspects that we need to look at into our regular evaluation programming. The comprehensive evaluations we feel should be linked effectively to the evaluation function within the organization and we've seen some spectacular uh, failures where this was not the case. So we concluded in Paris that guidance on CEs, whatever form this would take, lessons learned, best practices, uh, would be very useful and could improve quality and value for money. This guidance could be directed to the governing bodies and to evaluators and to stakeholders so that everybody knows when they're starting this up, this is what we can learn from. It would provide knowledge of good practice and would empower those urging coverage of sensitive issues even. But we want to seek your help in identifying how to achieve uh, uh, this guidance uh, and, and how to achieve some kind of legitimacy. A recognition in the community that this is important work and this community of practice should continue working with this. The guidance could be based on lessons learned, but more importantly on what is missing. Uh, I mentioned, for example, the issue of harmonization and benchmarking in comparison between organizations. So these uh, comprehensive evaluations have the potential to help address international fragmentation to identify comparative advantage of international organizations, but then we need to learn from these lessons. So the panel discussion that we want to have is actually an interactive one with the audience. We want to basically go through a set of questions and I'll invite a panel member to give a statement and uh, basically explore the issue and then uh, have an interaction with the audience, then move to the next panel member and have the same interaction. Which means that we need to be a little bit regimented, we need to basically do this in a, in a, a structural way as much as possible. And uh, so uh, I would actually want to go to the first panel member that I would want to invite to uh, react to all of this and that's uh, Derek Poet. Uh, Derek Poet uh, has been involved in many comprehensive evaluations. I think he's the, the ultimate practitioner, uh, practitioner's practitioner. And um, uh, he, I, I would like to ask him whether from his practice he recognizes this picture. And he feels that yes, these are indeed issues that, uh, that are serious, that should be uh, uh, considered further, or whether he wants to put some nuances on uh, the, the outcomes of the Paris uh, shop, uh, because indeed this is a community of practice, so let's start off with the practitioner. Derek.